I'm Tony Keat, the Christmas light guy. In this tutorial, I'll show you how I built my snowflake tree, how I set it up in X lights, and some of the challenges I ran into. In last year's display, I had a dozen snowflakes arranged in different locations. I purchased the snowflakes and really didn't have a plan where to incorporate them. I just used them to fill in where I could. I really wasn't happy with the use of the snowflakes. These are the 12 inch Lascoya Chroma Flake Snowflakes, the two prong version with 30 pixels each. This past spring, I attended the Florida Mega Mini and saw a demo of a snowflake tree. And this gave me the idea to use the snowflakes in a single prop and build my own snowflake tree. After a quick review of my display, I had the perfect location for the snowflake tree. I would hang it from the side of my garage, centered in the gable. One disclosure here. This build of a snowflake tree isn't super sturdy. It is meant to hold the snowflakes in position versus a self-standing prop. In order to make a self-standing prop, the frame or structure would have to be much, much sturdier. I also wanted a prop that I could take apart for easier storage. Let me show you how I built it. Let's first talk about the snowflake standoffs. I covered this topic in a previous video called Cable Tie Usage one of my five minute tips and trick tutorials, but I think it's worth showing again since this is how I mount the snowflakes to the tree structure. Here is a snowflake with my standoffs attached. The standoffs are a great way to get your vertically mounted props to sit flush against a garage door, a wall, side of a house, or in this case mounting it to a structure. The standoffs provide clearance for the pixels and the wires to the vertical surface or structure you're mounting your prop to. For the standoff, I use a short piece of half inch diameter PVC pipe about two and a half to three inches long. It has a 3 16 hole drilled all the way through the pipe about a quarter inch from the end. Next, I drill three holes in my prop, one in the center where the standoff will be positioned and then a hole a quarter inch away from the center hole on both sides. Next, I take the standoff and two cable ties, make a loop through the center hole and up through one of the edge holes, and do the same on this, uh, the other side. If you pull these um, cable ties tightly, you will have a nice standoff. If you'd like more information about this uh, standoff mounting technique, I will include the, the link to my previous video in the description below. I added standoffs to all 12 of the snowflakes, making sure the orientation on the snowflakes were all identical. Next, let's take a look at the tree structure. Here are the parts that I used. One half inch Schedule 20 PVC pipe for the standoffs only. One half inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe for everything else. One half inch PVC T connectors, 16 of those, 1 half inch 90 degree connectors, 8 of those, 3 quarter inch 180 degree structural pipe connectors from Maker Pipe, 3 of those, 1 16th inch steel cable, about 15 feet, uh, that's for mounting, electrical tape, and cable ties. The tree has two verticals, one at the top and one at the bottom for the trunk. This is where the props are mounted in an up and down orientation. This is the trunk with two snowflakes attached. You can see how I use the T connectors and the 90 degree connectors to build this. If I rotate this 90 degrees or so that it is horizontal, it could be used as a branch. The tree has three branches. This is where the props are mounted at a 90 degree orientation. To mount the branches, this is where the 180 degree maker pipe connectors are used. Here is another challenge I ran into and how I solved it. The maker pipe connectors are meant to be used with 3 quarter inch EMT pipe, but I'm using them with half inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Let me show you what I mean. I have the 180 degree maker pipe attached to this 1 half inch PVC pipe. Vertically, it is very tight, but horizontally, it isn't. I solved this by wrapping four to five turns of electrical tape around the end, 
Now when you insert it and tighten it, it becomes tight and a sturdy connection. Next I will show you how I mounted my snowflake tree. I use one 16th inch steel cable with a fixed loop on one end and the other end I wrapped around the first branch of the 180 degree maker pipe connector and then secured it with a couple of wire rope clamps. Here's what the snowflake tree looks like free hanging from the side of my garage. I temporarily hung it for this video. As you can see, I have a bit of droop on the third branch. I'm not sure what's going on there, but once I have a chance to take it down, I'll have a look. Next, let's take a look at how I modeled my snowflake tree in X-Lights. I've opened up X-Lights and I'm on the Layout tab. I'm going to skip the Controllers tab since there's really nothing special about the controller setup here. I started with a dozen 12-inch Escoyo Chroma Flake Snowflakes, the two-pronged versions with 30 pixels each. I arranged the snowflakes in a tree uh, layout fashion to match my tree structure. I started with all the snowflakes in the same orientation, meaning up and down. However, this was one of the challenges I ran into. The snowflakes aren't all physically mounted in the same direction. Remember on the tree branches, the snowflakes are rotated 90 degrees. When I was first testing my snowflake tree, the snowflakes weren't working properly on all the individual snowflakes. Some of the snowflakes were working properly, others seemed like they were out of phase or rotated. Then I realized I needed to adjust the x light snowflake model to match the physical build. Let me show you how you do that. So if you select it, and let's select it, go down to size and location and expand that, you will see um, a value called rotate Z. I have rotated each of the snowflakes in my branches 90 degrees to match my physical build. Next I will quickly show you the submodels and model groups I created before moving to my demo sequence. Okay, let's open up the submodels. Let's go to submodels. Click on submodels. Let me expand this. And first we'll start with rings. So the rings pretty self-explanatory. Rings one, two, three, four. I also define tips, which are the three pixels on the ends, six of those. And then I created um, submodels called C's, and these are the pixels that are sort of make a C shape on the snowflake. So one through six. Okay. I also created um, submodel um, using node ranges for tips and for rings. Okay, that's the submodels. Let's take a look at the model groups. I've created a few model groups using models and submodels, starting with all flakes, then all flakes rings, all flakes tips, all flakes tips 2, which uses the individual submodel tips instead of the submodel with node ranges, all flake C's, and then all flake C1 through 6. Now moving over to the sequencer tab, I've created a 36 second demo sequence with 12 effects, each being 3 seconds long. Let's take a look at those effects. The first one I call dancing lights. It's a single strand effect on all the individual snowflakes. Next I call divided. It's a single strand effect on the all flakes group. Next is red and green morph. It's the bars effect on the individual uh, individual snowflakes. Next I refer to this one as the red green up twinkle. I like this one. It is the meteors effect on the all flakes group. Next I call this one crazy circles and it is the single strand effect on the all flakes ring group. Next I call circles and it's the circle group 
on the all flame all fla flakes group. Next I call this one spinning tips. And it's let me expand 12 here. It's the bars group on the tips submodel of the individual snowflakes. Next I call spinning rings and it is the single strand effect on the ring one and in this case ring four since it's on this trunk. So one and four. Next I call wreaths and wreath is the um, bars effect on the all flake tips two group. Next I call this one twinkle and it's the bars effect on the all flakes rings group. Next one I call this one the moving seas. So it's seas moving around. And it is the bars effect at different timing uh, to produce this effect. And last but not least is the garland effect on the all flakes group. So these are the effects that I created. Uh, just to show you what the entire prop would look like. I really enjoyed building my snowflake tree and I'm pleased how it turned out. I was able to take existing snowflakes that were basically used as filler and create a very cool prop that fits perfectly with my house and display. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new from it. If you did and would like to see more tutorials like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel the Christmas light guy. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. All you have to do is press the subscribe button below.